Hi, and welcome to this short video about diarrhea. So it's always good to start with some definitions of exactly what we're talking about. So diarrhea is loose watery stools three or more times a day. And diarrhea may be acute, persistent or chronic. Acute diarrhea is a common problem that typically lasts one or two days and goes away on its own. But persistent diarrhea will last longer than two weeks. And after four weeks, we call that chronic diarrhea. So there's your definitions of what diarrhea is. And we're going to look at some of the things that might uh, cause it and some of the things that might alleviate problems. So diarrhea is sometimes thought of as a malabsorption problem. So you're exceeding your capacity to use bile acids. So you could dial back, for instance, the amount of fat you're eating. Or you could try to fix this by increasing your meal frequency, but having smaller meals. Some people try adding a probiotic or a prebiotic to their meals. And this is in the hope that their gut bacteria catches up. So when you go on to a new way of eating sometimes, and there's slightly higher levels of fat, your capacity to produce bile to break down those fats could possibly be a little bit lacking. So you get this malabsorption. Obviously, if you have diarrhea and it's really concerning you, some people do go and have a colonoscopy just to investigate, to see if there's any other particular issues down there. And magnesium citrate in particular as a supplement can be very problematic if you're taking magnesium for other reasons. Um, obviously, speak to your healthcare professional first or somebody that's advising you about your health because it could be simply that uh, too much magnesium is, is giving you a problem of diarrhea. So when you transition from a different way of eating, uh, you will possibly notice that you reduce the amount of fiber going into your system and your colon will clear up a little bit. So we haven't got fiber in the colon, but you've still got the fluid in your foods. For instance, a ribeye is 70% water. So you are consuming quite a lot of fluid. Uh, Yes, obviously you're drinking liquids, but also there's fluid in the food, which you used to have before. But now what's happening, because you're reducing your fiber, that fluid is coming out of you in the stool, but it's not attached to fiber. So it seems a little bit more watery. So the colon needs to regain the capacity to absorb water better. And that's what we often call the adaptation period. And you need your GI tract and stomach secreting more hydrochloric acid. So when you transition to this way of eating, low carb, ketivore uh, and carnivore, you will find that your stomach acid secretion tends to improve over time. So does your bile production through a mechanism. For instance, um, an amino acid called taurine will improve your stomach acid and it will also um, improve your bile production amino acid it's um, a breakdown from protein so how does how does the gallbladder work cck makes the gallbladder squeeze and inject bile into the system so we often find people adapting to this way of eating don't have a gallbladder they've had it removed for whatever reason well once that gallbladder is gone they're worried that it's not going to be the same for them but the bile duct does take over and sort of acts as a surrogate gallbladder and we've seen this in quite a lot of cases where people can adapt quite readily and actually consume quite a lot of fat even without gallbladder but if you have a gallbladder missing then it can be a problem some hacks for people um, we've noticed that some people eat cheese and that seems to lessen their amount of diarrhea some people have had electrolyte issues and they've just looked at adding more salt uh, just a half a teaspoon of salt a day in a small glass of water has been just enough to uh, improve their situation on the toilet. And don't forget your stomach needs to adjust to adjust to this new food. So your entire body is eating a different way. So you've got your mechanical digestion in your mouth that stays pretty much the same. But then once you're in the stomach, like I say, your stomach acid production tends to improve with this way of eating. Your bile production does tend to improve and bile has many um, benefits to your GI tract and your digestive system. For instance, bile not only helps you emulsifies fat, emulsify fats, but also has a detergent type of role in cleaning up the GI tract 
once your stomach has emptied and your food is evacuated the small intestine and gone into the colon so many things you need to adapt your gut bacteria obviously your gut microbiome needs to adapt to this new way of eating as well do remember that when you're eating a more nutritious diet the volume of your poop will reduce when you've adapted because Basically, there's less waste. You're eating things that your body can use. All the proteins have essential amino acids, which go to make structures in the body. Obviously, improving your muscle mass would be one obvious thing to think about, but your bone density, your bone strength, your nails, your hair, everything that requires protein. So you're now producing enough good food for that body to use in production of those things. And obviously, the essential fatty acids going to make um, hormones, the myelin sheaf around your nerves, neurotransmitters, those sort of things. So there's less waste. You're eating good, nutritious food. There's going to be less waste. You will see you will have decreased frequency and often you'll see an urgency that maybe starts initially. That will go as well. And you might end up just going to the toilet once a day. So there are some adaptation things to notice. Your gut bacteria will adapt to this new way of eating. And I know this is an N equals one. I've noticed that I don't produce any gas anymore. There's hardly any smells, uh, which is really good. And the caliber, that's the diameter of your poop can reduce. So possibly when people claim that adding plants reduce the problem, it could be because of what we said earlier, that the colon was plugged up with fiber. So now that fiber is, is getting in the way, more liquid is being absorbed. So it doesn't look like you've got the watery stools because the water that's coming out is attached to that fiber. A low fat diet history means the body is not adapted to the extra fat as well. So you can get loose stools, like I say. So bile digests and absorbs fats, but it also assists the excretions. And you can find some strange things that you might not expect causing you problems with diarrhea, such as artificial sweeteners. And we'll get on to the reason for that in a second. Um, we talked about magnesium earlier, even magnesium oxide, which is a cheap supplement that you can get, which is very, very um, inefficient in being absorbed, can be a cause of diarrhea. So if you are needing to supplement with magnesium, then slow mag can be better. And then you get into food maps, which stands for fermentable oligo diet or monosaccharides and polyols. These are short chain carbs and they're resistant to digestion. So this is gluco mo glucose molecules that are attached to each other or they're attached to an alcohol. So instead of being absorbed into your bloodstream, they reach the far end of your intestine where most of your gut bacteria reside. Your gut bacteria then uses these um, carbohydrates, these glucose uh, molecules for fuel, producing hydrogen gas and causing digestive symptoms in sensitive individuals. So food maps also draw liquid into the intestine, which can cause diarrhea, the watery stores we talked about earlier. So not everyone is particularly sensitive to food maps, but it is very common among people with irritable bowel syndrome, in syndrome IBS. And some of the common food maps include fructose, that's a simple sugar found in many fruits and vegetables that also makes up the structure of table sugar and most added sugars. Lactose, which is a carbohydrate found in di uh, dairy products like milk. Uh, fructans, which are found in many foods like grains, wheat, spelt, rye and barley. Galactans found in large amounts in legumes and polyols, which are sugar alcohols. And there's many, many uh, artificial sweeteners that have this problem. So they're found in some fruits and vegetables, and like I say, often used in sweeteners. Uh, sugar alcohols basically cannot be cleaved apart. They're men made the artificial sweeteners, some of them are human made, I should say. Uh, they can't be cleaved apart. So they end up in the colon. They have these osmotic effects as well. And one of the weird things about this is you can paradoxically get diarrhea and symptoms of bloating and constipation at the same time. So you can feel quite mixed up about what's going on. So if you've come to the carnivore way of eating or your keto or ketovore, it might be just simply taking out the artificial sweetness could be a big help for you. And just for those that are ketovore and have some of the things like cauliflower, nuts and berries, they can be troublesome too. So anyway, that's my take on diarrhea. In summary, one of the things you could do is have less fat per meal if you're suffering from diarrhea and just wait until you're adapted. 
but that doesn't mean reducing the overall amount of food. You could just have less fat per meal, but add um, an extra meal into your day. So if you're eating two meals a day, go to three meals a day. And just let your body adapt. Try not to overhydrate. Obviously, if you've got watery stools and your urine is clear, that's a that's an often a sign that you are drinking too much water. Don't be scared of that. Um, if you drink too much water, of course, you can be depleting yourself of uh, electrolytes, which then has a knock on effect. So you could be low on salt. So sometimes just reducing the amount of water intake and maybe having half a teaspoon of salt in a small glass of water at the beginning of the day to help with the hydration, the re retention of water that you do drink, that might be a thing to look at. You can avoid magnesium supplements, as we spoke about earlier, magnesium oxide, and look at things like low mag, and avoid sweetness and fiber. So anyway, that's, that's my bit about diarrhea. If you are interested in the fact I mentioned bloating and constipation as a side issue, then I have got a video just dedicated to the problems of constipation, which I will try to link at the end of the YouTube video. Anyway, if it's not there, I'll just put a playlist in for you. But thank you very much for listening. Do try to comment, like and subscribe. I would really appreciate anyone that has had this particular issue and seen it resolve. And any comments about what you did to get rid of your diarrhea would be greatly appreciated. Once again, thank you very much for listening.